Good morning, friends and neighbors of the Church of the Angels. The church is an independent, non-denominational, interfaith, spiritualist assembly. My name is Reverend Jenny Bancourt, and I am your facilitator for today. Uh, we'll spend about an hour together with prayer, sharing, and some song. Uh, you may join us today with just your audio if you choose, because service is being recorded. Uh, and just so you know that when the recording comes out, if uh, the only thing that shows up on the recording is the person who is speaking. So um, uh, if you don't want to be on the recording uh, with your face, you can just uh, join us with your audio and, and not worry about your video at all. Um, and it is being recorded so that we can offer the opportunity to have more folks connect up with us. Um, I also ask that you stay muted during the majority of the service so uh, any background noise doesn't interfere with anybody's enjoyment. And Reverend Bobby, of course, will unmute when he shares music with us. And during the sharing, sharing portion, excuse me, of our service, if you want to comment or you have a question, just either raise your hand or get to me through the group chat session or, um, you know, wave your hands, do something, and I will call on you so you can unmute yourself and uh, make sure that your comment or your question gets answered. I also want to mention before we get started that if you wish to make a donation, you can do so through, through the church's website. Uh, and if you choose, you can make that donation a recurring one, a monthly one, or, or bi-monthly, or whatever, if you choose. Um, and I want to give a big thank you to everyone who has donated already to help us keep the church going through this difficult time. Please join us for our opening prayer. Mother, Father, Infinite Spirit, thank you for your blessings on those joining us today to honor your work and experience your grace and wisdom. Thank you for providing the appropriate thoughts, insights, actions and all resources for us to gain a better and truer understanding of your love by the words spoken and the healing brought forth here today so that we may lead healthy happy and prosperous lives thank you for showing us the way to accept responsibility for our lives we are grateful to know that you are with us always so be it and now if you would listen to our statement of principles there is one creative force of which all life is a part this one creative force is known by many names and manifestations. We recognize and honor the many names and manifestations of the one creative force, the source of all creation, one in God. The energy of life everywhere is continuous. All consciousness is continuous. Communication is continuous. The energy of life, consciousness, and communication never cease, even after the event that is perceived as death. One creates one's own reality. One creates in harmony with the one creative force, the great power of God, of which all life is a part. Reality is as one chooses to perceive and will change as one grows in knowledge of the inner self and one's relationship with the God of his understanding. All things are possible with faith, insight, knowledge, understanding, acceptance, and love. Love is the unifying energy of the universe. Love is the energy of the one creative force, the wisdom of God. All life and all mankind are one in the creatorship and healing force of love and with each other. Love is within us and of us. Love is never apart from us. It is we who separate ourselves from the power of love. The force of God works through love and love alone. And now I'd like to have a few moments of quiet meditation so that we can concentrate on going within to find the peace and calm and healing for ourselves and for the world. So Bobby, could you give us some healing, uh, quiet, not healing, well, it is healing. Never mind the babbling again. I love it. I know you love it when I babble. Go. <laughs> Take a few deep breaths. Relax into the chair, floor beneath you. Move into the silence and let the music take you to that peace and calm.
another deep breath in and let it out. Take your time and come back to the present. And remember that we are always connected to each other and to the divine at every moment. Use this peace and calm to take care of yourselves and those around you in your communities and throughout the entire world in whatever way you can. And if you would now silently or aloud, please say the names or add the names that you wish to include in this healing energy. Thank you. Elizabeth. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Bobby, if you would uh, help us again in raising our vibration this time with a song. Pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up and let me stand, my faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise. And fears dismay, though some may dwell where those abound. My prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live in blessed love and hear the voices from above. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of those on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. <laughs> All right, it's time now for Inspiration and Thought Exchange, brought to us by today's speaker. We do invite everyone to address this assembly with words of inspiration, lessons learned, or passionate ideas. And our speaker today is Angeline Huff. Now, I first met Angeline when we had our sister church down in Mahoning Valley. And I don't have a bio for her handy, so I'm going to let her, Angeline, if you would, um, First, before your talk, give everybody a little bit about how you came to your spiritual life and how you found the church and that sort of thing. So I give you Angeline Huff. Oh, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, 
there's a reason that I didn't send a bio, Reverend Jenny. Um, uh, you know, I guess it was maybe 2009. I met an, a, a sage wisdom teacher in a group that I was in. And the question was for us to define who we were. She said, I don't care what you tell me. She said, so we started all naming, I'm a mother, I'm a father, I'm a preacher, I'm a student. And she said, well, you probably could go on till the end of time naming who you are. She said, but you won't know who you are, what you are until the end of the journey. I was like, oh, what is she talking about? But then I started looking back at who I was and how I came to this spiritual journey. The one thing that I got in trouble most for when I was younger, we were down south at my father's church and they were asking us who Jesus was. And I said, oh my, Jesus is the greatest magician I ever met. And all of a sudden the teacher got up and I heard rumbling and she went upstairs. And I was like, oh no, what did I do? What did I do? And I just, in my mind that, you know, seven years old, I'm thinking he's magical. All these things that you tell me that he does. And then they always talk about Jesus is my friend. And I was like, well, he's dead, but you talk to him and he's your friend. That's pretty magical. And I got in a world of trouble for that. And so I always thought, what is this about my family? And I come from a long, long line of healers. I didn't find out until I was caregiving to my mother that they had a group of women called the Silent Seven. And they would come and they would meet and they would bring their bags and they would be dressed in their beads and their chimes and all. What are they doing in there? My mom would say, oh, they're teaching etiquette about how to live in the world. Well, here later I learned that they did mediumship, they did tarot readings, they did oracle readings, they had prayer circles. So that's how I came to it. And so when I describe myself, like unless it's in a professional setting, I tend to go back to something that I read from Mr. Rogers. And he said, when I was ordained, it was for a special ministry, that of serving children and families through television. I consider that what I do for Mr. Rogers' neighborhood is my ministry. A ministry doesn't have to be only through a church or even through an ordination. And I think we can all minister to others in this world by being compassionate and caring. I hope you will feel good enough about yourselves that you will want to minister to others and that you will find your own unique, unique way to do that. And I think that is who I am. Like in this time, just through the healing gifts and through writing and through the work that I've done, I'm here to minister to heal. So when you asked me to speak, I went round about, I couldn't think about what I wanted to talk about and then something that I wrote several years ago, the topic of misery came up. And it was something that I wrote in, you know how all we're always taught, misery loves company. Misery loves company. And if you act like that, you're walking in misery's company. And so I thought, oh, you know, that's true. But as I started to learn, I started to believe that misery loved an audience more then she loves company. So recently, I just kind of took a straw poll, especially with some of the younger members of the community that I'm associated with. And I asked them what they thought, misery, did she like company more or did she prefer an audience? And several of them said, you know, probably five or six years ago, I would have said that misery loves company more, but I'm pretty sure now that misery loves an audience. So I would like to share the original piece that I wrote. It was a poem called The Day That Misery Walked. And um, when I rewrote it in uh, probably about 2014, um, I just added some things because there was a question of what does my soul want? What does my soul want me to know right now? And this was the lesson that misery loves an audience more. So I hope I share you know, when I share it with you, it touches your spirit in some way. And we can remember um, who we are. I'd like to say that we are love and that that is all we are. And that's who I am. I'd like to believe that I am love. So I don't think I'm part of misery's company either. I used to because, you know, you grow up and you have all the crazy hardships and things that people tell you about yourself. 
But um, so I'll share this with you today. The day Misery walked. Misery went for a walk in the park. She took a chance and left out into the dark. Her goal was very simple indeed. All she needed was a little company and so began her disheartening tryst. What she sought was neither hard to find nor difficult for her egos to resist. It seemed everywhere she went. People made time to share tales of woe and lives gone wild. Sad stories did abound. On each street corner in every neighborhood, there was at least one or more willing to share how his precious life energy was spent. A broken heart that never seemed to mend, a spirit broken again and again, a nameless face lost in this rat race. So many souls seeking a place to claim as their intimate and sacred space. Even the most decadently rich ones stayed on the spy, trying to come claim that which their money could never buy. Before misery could blink her eyes, she gained a captive audience in the multitudes that passed her by. So many unique guests gathered in her name, the crowd grew quite large. It soon became an unsightly party. No doubt about it, misery was in charge. And oh, I thought, what a shame. Oh my, what a pity. Although at first they could not see, ushered in among the throngs, three sisters' names appeared on Misery's guest list. She paused and she haughtily tossed her head and made shameless hissing sound. Misery sharply and indignantly asked, who invited you to this party ground? And Faith happily proclaimed, who me? Why are you so surprised? Don't you know I show up everywhere? You can count on me, I'm always standing near. Even when you can't see me, all it takes is for you to believe. Call out my name and I'll be there. Even when you can't see the net and all, take the leap. I'm here to catch you whether you stumble, trip, or fall. Oh, misery paused and turned her back. She was growing tired of all listening to all this inspirational flack. Suddenly from behind the chaotic scene, she heard a whisper. Oh, don't be mad, said Faith. It's only the voice of my tender sister. Her name is Grace. Some folks say Grace is kind of strange. You see, she moves in all directions, and yet she flows with intention. She moves along just at the right place and often leaves without a trace. Misery heavily sighed, and she crossly whined. Life is not fair. My favor comes really cheap. So shall I sow, so shall I reap. I adore the company I keep. Excuse me, um, I beg your pardon, exclaimed a mighty voice. I'm Hope. Do you not know you always have a choice? Oh, my sweet, I know sometimes my arrival is a little slow, but trust in me, I float in and out and to and fro. I'm here, I'm there, I exist everywhere. Hold faster your dreams. Together with my sisters in our hands, we hold the greatest gift of all. It doesn't matter who you are, big or small. Misery looked around and to her surprise, the size of her traveling company was dwindling down. Even she, who started off like a superstar, noticed her company was slipping away. She was losing her crown. Misery could not hold on to this limiting space. She knew very soon the truth was about to turn things upside down. Within the blink of an eye, a great light burst through and pushed out the gloom. Three sisters formed a circle, and without a sound, they fell to their knees and offered praise to the heavens above. From their raised hands and light-filled palms appeared a rising dove. Be not afraid. It's not a trick. It's our offering of peace. It's our present. Accept it freely. Within its beautiful promise, you will find that you no longer, no longer will your hearts be broken or be sick. Faith looked at me straight in her eye, and she winked her eye that first night, and softly she spoke. The next time you step out with misery the way you sometimes do, remember, she loves the company, it's true. But every crowd, you must stand tall. Take a leap, fill our presence, and we guarantee, even though you cannot see or continue to believe, my sisters and I will be there to catch you when you fall. One day you will know you belong to us. We understand that there's no easy way down 
and the way back is a crooked mile. We share a simple truth. If you walk with misery and all her troubles, you surely will go down. She travels through life with a kick and a scream. In her company, the ego leads and souls lose sight of dreams. Be mindful of the company you keep and remember inside the audience of misery, faith, hope, grace sustain. Their mother stands with them as a blessing from above. Her name is Mother Love. When your journey pulls at your heart and threatens to take your breath away, do not let the audacity of misery and her myriad of temporary distractions lead you astray. Take a breath, call out her names. Misery will have no choice. We promise she cannot stay. You have the power to man to demand that misery walk a different way. And so I think that's where we are now. And I really have looked like within this movement of um, Black Lives Matter and COVID and we talk about white supremacy and all of this, yeah, that just causes distress and truly misery. What I have seen and what I hold close to my heart, and I think that we all do um, in this spiritual life, is the love, is the grace, is the intention, is set. Like, we have all this miserable stuff, but look how many times there's been a cry from someone who says, you know, um, I had a family member who's sick from COVID, and I can't pay my bills, I can't do this, and then there it is they're taken care of or in the middle of extreme what we would perceive as extreme hate that's misery we look around and we find all these people loving and building and speaking for the most positive highest good of all of us and so i think that we're in a really powerful time right now of change and it's it's so important that we be present and that we always look to see who's with inside of that audience that we're moving around with because it can get really easy to you know latch on to misery's arm and say let's go and we're drudging and we're drudging along but that's not what we were born to be and that's not the gift that spirit provides us um within our hearts within our minds so that's my message for today it's very um I, I just, I, I see so much um, love coming out of this strange and crazy times that we're living in. And I, I'm just grateful. And I'm grateful that what was set upon my heart was to be a part of the peacemaking and changing conflict, transforming it into something um, powerfully beautiful and uh, for the highest good of all. So I don't know what other people think, but um, I would love to hear. All right. Thank you, Angeline. Yes, I'm definitely going to open it up for comments. Um, I see clapping. I see lots of clapping out there. All right. Yes, clapping and waving. All right. I want to say that I'm a little less sideways now. Thank you so much for that because I'm a little less sideways today. Uh, but I do want to open it up. So let me um, look for some hand raising or throw me at the chat. Uh, uh, Patricia, go ahead and unmute yourself. You have a comment? Hang on. Yep, we're still waiting. Hang on. There. Did you get it? Okay. There you go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it was a beautiful um, presentation, and I love the poem. And the poem reminds us of who we are, actually are and how we're supposed to be. And... Um, not to fall into despair and distrust, which were our and hate, which are really the sisters of in the comp in the um, company of um, misery. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think that that was that was that was confirmation of us being on the right path of what we're supposed to do in life. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Judy. I see your hand raised. Oh, you're still muted, Judy. Hang on. There we go. How's that? Yep, much better. Okay, Andrea, thanks so much. That was just beautiful. You know, it, it, love is always the answer, and uh, misery 
is one of the places that takes us to the depths of, of remembering that and discovering that in, in new ways, and which is what you chose to do. And I really appreciate your talk, and it really is beautiful because the talk that I'll be doing next week will be right in sync with what you were saying, but I loved, loved your writings. Thank you. Uh, Cindy Hudson. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Um, I agree. It was a wonderful talk. And I think that, um, you know, it reminds, I love the concept that misery loves an audience because that's going to cue me that when I hear somebody starting to, you know, step on their soapbox, it's like, yeah, they love an audience, not company. They don't want to be in their company. I will temporarily be an audience. And then the poem was a wonderful reminder that we can be ambassadors to those sisters here on earth plane. We can, we can be the ambassadors of faith and hope and grace to those that are looking for an audience of misery. Um, so yeah, just wonderful concepts to ponder this week. And I, I thank you so very, very much. It was just a beautiful talk. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Barbara, B. Beckbar, and we go ahead. Janice on mute. <laughs> She's needs on mute. Let me see if I can do it for you. No? Were you talking about me? Oh, wrong Barb. No, yeah, Barb, uh, Barb. Okay, B, I'm going to come back to you, honey. Hang on a minute. All right, uh, Dale and Carol, did you have your hand up? Yes, go ahead. I, I did. I just really appreciated the talk, the poem. It's just perfect for these times. And the part I really liked, and I, I could just picture people standing around with a commiserating, <laughs> everybody talking about all the negative things, almost like a, a misery competition. And, and your poem and your talk were just perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. B, have you found your unmute button yet? <laughs> Should be on the lower left hand corner. All right. While you're still looking, I see Cynthia's hand up, I think, or Rogers. Go ahead. I want a copy. <laughs> you want a copy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. And Angeline, Here. if you're willing, if you're willing, you can give it to me and I can get it, I can get it to them. Okay. I can okay. Sure. <laughs> It was beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Let me see if I find any more hands. Let's, uh, Lydia. Hi, Angeline. I just right. wanted to tell you that I totally resonate with your message. I mean, it's just, it was beautifully said the way you said it and um, with your poem and who you are and your beautiful soul. And I'm just so happy to get to see it better, you know, when you get to communicate, you know, we're in a kind of communicating. And I just wanted to, you know, I appreciate you like everyone else. And I appreciate all the comments that everybody said, because I felt all the same. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take one last look around. Um, oh, Barbara Douglas, I see. Go ahead. Yes. Barbara, Barbara. Um, yeah. Thank you. I didn't know how to <laughs> wave my hand. Angeline, yeah. thank you. I, I did appreciate it. And it reminded me, I, I did leave for a moment, so I'm not sure if someone said this, but Caroline Mace at one point, Caroline Mace had written a book about how we, and I can't remember the word she used, but like we bind each other through our wounds, you know, oh, there's someone else who was molested as a child, or there's someone else who name another misery, you know, and how we um, not only walk through life that way, but, but bind ourselves to people through our wounds. And um, so anyway, I just thank you very much. It was great. Thank you. All right, and Miss B, I see that you have uh, you have unmuted yourself. Go ahead. Dave. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, I am in 
contact with my forebearers uh, a great deal, Angeline. And one of the things that my great grandmother said to me is, be ye not afraid for I am with ye. And part of your poem uh, said to be not afraid. And I believe that that is so true. You, a person can get so caught up in the fear factor of mm -hmm. current situation that it hide, it shield, it, um, it blocks um, reason. Uh, and I believe your poem uh, was absolutely marvelous in opening eyes and uh, I give you great kudos. I'm, um, I would love a copy of it, actually. Uh, Do that. Somehow, if Reverend Jenny could figure out how to, if you would permit me to have a copy, um, I find it um, very inspirational and extremely on point for me ex specifically. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you. And thank you, Angeline, again for, for speaking. That was absolutely wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for all the, the wonderful comments. I'm sure that it, it hit home for several of us today. So again, thank you, Angeline. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank great. you. Yes. Thank you. All right, now for um, a few announcements. Uh, next week, we do have Judy Naren speaking with us again. Um, and that is uh, the first Sunday in August. Um, the next development circle is August 3rd at 7 p.m. The next thought exchange is August 6th at 7 p.m. I do need speakers, um, some speakers in August. So if anybody is interested in speaking or sharing an opinion, uh, please uh, throw me an email and you can do that through the church's website. Um, and some of you have my personal uh, email, that's okay too. And now uh, we'll move into a little bit of message work. Um, and uh, as spiritualists, we believe that the energy of all beings is forever linked, that all of us have direct access to the love and guidance of loved ones, guides, teachers, saints, healers, and angels on the other side of life. And we do have mediums with us today who have agreed to be of service and will connect up with spirit to give just a, a few messages for us. And first, um, I would like to call on Reverend Linda Kupiak. Would you, would, be, uh, would you be so kind as to give us a few messages, Linda? Yes, um, Cheryl, may I give you a message? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Cheryl, I see um, a butterfly um, fluttering around uh, a tiger swallowtail. For, um, and it's fluttering beautifully around you. But it also wants you to know it's, it's fluttering inside you. And it's not, it's, it's not to be taken negative, like, oh, fluttering, fluttering. But um, it's this colorful, beautiful um, butterfly. And as I understand, you are becoming more comfortable with yourself, who you are inside, um, like your spirit self. Your, you, you, um, your you've been in touch with that, with your, with your spiritual self. And, um, um, let's see. You've realized that you are not lost, um, not lost whatsoever. Um, in coming, in becoming comfortable with yourself, uh, you've gained confidence, um, and it's not necessarily, oh, like a go-go confidence. Um, it's a soft confidence, but it's, it's strong within yourself. Again, a lot of this has to do with inside you. Um, I don't know the meaning of butterfly. You may want to look that up, but um, uh, the butterfly is this beautiful butterfly in, inside you. Um, uh, and I also, there's two women present. Uh, there's an older lady. She has a huge smile. Um, very, very proud of you. And there's also a younger gal um, present. And her hands are outstretched, uh, outstretched to you. 
with all this warmth and this love and um, appreciation, thanking you um, for, for what you created on, on this earth plane for her. Um, they both are just so happy for you, who, who you've become. Um, all the questions that you've asked over time, uh, they're just so pleased that you're settling in um, to it. not just accepting yourself, but again, like the universal message, um, becoming who you are. And they just send so much love um, and support and um, support in that in that inner yellow light butterfly. Uh, that's really a big thing here with you, um, Cheryl, but um, I will leave that with you. Thank you Thank so you, much. Jenny. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Jenny, for allowing oh. me to serve. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Linda. Um, yes. Uh, actually, I'm going to ask if there are any students or any practicing mediums that want to practice today. Uh, Reverend Carol? Yes, go ahead. Our, I mean, Carol Miller, excuse me. <laughs> that, I think that was a, for, uh, uh, that was a foresight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, Mark, may I come to you? Mark Zor? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. You know, Mark, this, is, this is so funny. When you're in the upper right corner, on my computer so it's kind of a prominent spot you know it's a corner and um when i i first sat down i felt a western connection and then i remember and, and i'm like no no it's native american and then i remembered who you are right you're you're out west right now correct mark I, um yeah, I, I can't hear you. Then. Um, so yep. I, I, yeah, and standing behind you, I, I did see. Yeah, uh, that's I, correct. I, that's correct. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, 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 it, I didn't put it together immediately. But as a student medium, I did think, oh, good, oh, good, I was right. Western and Native American after I put your name together. And then I, I did see like a very bright, I would probably have to say angel. I think it's more than a guy. Um, very big, very bright behind you. Um, sending encouragement to you um, that you're, what you're doing, you're on, you're on the right path. This is good. You're not quite you know, done with what you want to be doing on or what you want to accomplish or learn right now. But, but what you're doing is really good and it, it's good that you did this. And then I did see some ancestors of yours also, sort of like they're like lining up behind you also and they're they're coming in s sort of uh, on this not quite the western theme but sort of a pioneer type theme that and i'm seeing in particular a woman a man and a woman i'm almost seeing you know the covered wagon type thing um coming and they are distant uh, relatives in, in the past coming in with with love for you and um, and they're saying just keep not just keep doing what you're doing but also keep preparing I think the wagon might represent putting things together for yourself for for your further journeys whether you know not necessarily physical 
and they're sending a, a lot of love. I think this could be, I don't know if your grandparents are in spirit or, or farther back. I think that's, I think I'm gonna leave that with you, with love and light. Thank you, Carol. Did you have another one, Carol, or, or is that know, it today? I, I kind of did, and it, it, it's kind of a throwback from weeks ago. It's for Ileana. Would you like a message? Yes, thank you, Carol. Yes, you know, it was, it was probably more than weeks ago, maybe a month ago, but I'm, I'm seeing it again um, today. And I had seen it from my neighbor, who's a nurse. A lot of people behind you coming in, and I'm guessing some of them former uh, patients coming in with thankfulness. But I'm all, speaking of nurse, I'm also seeing a nurse come in that you knew. Thank you. Uh, and um, they're sending support. They're sending support um, that this is a difficult time. And they're sending support and thanks for the, the, they're saying the love and service. So they felt that your care was beyond this is my job. There, there's thanking you for for the love and care that you gave them, and that um, they'll continue sending support. The nurse, the nurse just wants to say a special hello. Um, She's, she's, I, I don't believe that she was like really old when she passed, but neither was she very, very young. And, and she also just knows how hard you work. And she's, she's sending, she says she's with you a lot. And I'm going to leave that with you with love and light. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. All right, is there anybody else who wants to give it a try before I move along to Anne-Marie, would you like to give it a try? All right, good for you. What have you got? Uh, Reverend Vicki, can I give you a message? Um, I have a male yeah. energy that's with you. Um, he shows me that he's like a headmaster, um, dressed in maybe early English uh, where he has the mortar board and the gown and a pointer. Um, it's sort of a, a nod to your teaching abilities. Um, and he's also showing fruits all around you, like peaches and cherries. Um, and it, it's talking about the fruits of your labor. And it, um, I'm getting a two month time. Maybe something will come up because of your teaching in two months. Um, I think the, the fruit also is to signify that life is sweet and he wants you to enjoy life even as it is during this time. But you are to, again, enjoy the fruits of your labor. And I leave that with Spirit's blessing. Thank you. Nice job, Anne-Marie. Nice Thank job. <laughs> um, okay, I have, I have a couple of quick ones. Um, and one is for you, Anne-Marie. Would you like a message? <laughs> yes, I just unmuted. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, as, as I'm uh, tuning into your energy, I want to say that the spirits are talking about an anniversary or a birthday coming up. Not one that has just passed, but there's one coming up that, um, they, uh, that feels very heartfelt to you. Um, and they want you to know that there is a huge party uh, um, going on on the other side. You know, uh, so this is this is definitely it involves someone on the other side. This anniversary or birthday, and they want you to um, just uh, raise a glass. I don't know if it was wine they liked or whether it was oh no maybe like bourbon. I'm not sure, but <laughs> but anyway, oh, they want you to raise. Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> uh, they want you to raise a glass and uh, and but they want you to know that they're partying too. So um, it's just to be remembered, and um, they just want you to know that they're fine and they're having a good time. So 
Okay, and I'll leave that Thank with you. you. And another really quick one for Emily Jones. Would you like a message, please? I would love one. All right, Emily, I just want to say stop waiting. <laughs> stop putting it off. Um, they're saying uh, even in this craziness, there are those that are willing to you know, work with you, whether it be phone, whether it be Zoom, whether it be whatever, but those lessons are to be learned and you need to be get rolling right now. Okay. <laughs> Although I can't tell you what to do because you have free will and free, you know, free choice. <laughs> but they're saying, get on it. Okay. And I'll leave that with you with a lot of love and blessing. All right. Okay. Yeah. And to finish this, you're quite welcome. To finish this off, Reverend Vicki, would you give us a couple of messages? Sure thing. Uh, is Ernie here? Oh, Ernie, I have a message for you. Would you like a message? Okay. I'm going to say, go ahead and give it to him. <laughs> okay, um, Ernie, uh, you're starting to work on something new, and you're kind of hesitant about it. Uh, Spirit is showing that it's going to be a longer project, and it's supposed to be that way. In about a year and a half, you'll have it up and running. It's, it feels like a healing modality, and you've just sort of toyed with it, but now Spirit is saying it's time. You've got lots of time on your hands to work with it. Archangel Michael is with you, and I leave that with you with Spirit's blessings. Uh, thank, Lydia, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Lydia, would you like a quick message? Yes, I would. Uh, uh, Spirit is coming in, and they're showing you walking on a tightrope, and you're holding one of those bars, and you're carefully walking on it, and they're telling me there's a net underneath you. You, you can run across this tightrope if you want to. They will get, catch you. Your angels and guides are there for you. And just go with your heart with anything you make decisions about. And take it easy, I'm hearing. And I'll leave that with you with many blessings. Thank, thank you, you for letting me serve. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Vicki. And uh, Reverend Cindy, you said you had, you had a message to give. We'll, we'll, we'll hear it. <laughs> okay. So, hi. Thanks. Um, Angeline, would you like a message this morning? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Thanks. Um, so as you know, this is not really related to your talk. Um, and I get things this morning, especially more through feeling than, so I have to put it into words, but, um, there is a circle of women. Um, you, you mentioned the circle of seven that you didn't know about till later, but this is a circle of women. I believe it's more than seven, but I believe it encompasses the few generations of of the seven, I guess I'll say. So that's why it's more than seven. And they're showing me like they're, they're two of the people are breaking hands and opening the circle up for you to join them. Um, and you've been among them. This is not related to your talk today, but you've been among them. And they're, they're showing a welcoming um, for you. But they also understand that you have a different understanding or you have a different flavor or twist of your spiritual understandings than maybe what they held. And, um, and that's okay because I feel like they're, they gave pause. They don't want you to forget the roots of what those women stood for, but they also want you to carry the new generation of information forward. And I don't know if that makes sense or not, but um, that it, it isn't gonna be the same. No generation carries the spiritual energies forward in the same way as the predecessors you're actually part of this next generation as you, as you teach and as you share. So it's a different twist. Be mindful of what they did. Be respectful of that. They, they know that you would be. They just don't want you to forget it. And they want you to um, bring that and your wisdom forward to the next generation. You've got a very important mission, very serious mission. And they, they, leave, you with, they leave you with, of course, love, but more deeply than that, is gratitude and, and um, reverence. Reverence is the word. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to serve. You're quite welcome. Thank you. And thank you for everyone's kind attention. Uh, thank you to all participants and mediums and especially to spirit and the God of your understanding for being with us today and always. For those who may be new to the Church of the Angels, you can learn more about the church at our website, which is www thechurchoftheangels.net. If you have any questions, you can catch us. Uh, the email address can be found on that site as well. And so, Bobby, would uh, we uh, would you join? <laughs>
give us there you go again you, you yes, keep talking again every time I talk things to you, come fun. out oh my gosh that's so much fun to listen to you jen yeah yeah i know <laughs> and then after bobby's closing song we will give a closing prayer so go ahead bobby thank you so here's what i heard from the whole shebang <laughs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. God gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine. God gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine. God gave it to me and you, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right now, hide it under a bushel. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everybody, this the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Now this the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, let it shine, let it shine, let it. There she was, just walking down the street singing. <laughs> In closing. Let us pray. <laughs> do why did he? Okay. Infinite yes. spirit, mother, father, God, as we move forward, we thank you in advance for the guidance and resources you always provide for us to live the fullest expression of your love. We pray for all those affected by the circumstances throughout our world at this time. And may we be reminded of the opportunities to reconnect in love to all those around the world, mother earth and the universe. Amen. And yeah, you don't know how close I came to do what I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I knew she was falling in love.